I think uh, one of the biggest mistakes that you know families um, um, may make is not uh, being accepting of hospice early enough in the decline of their loved one. You know, I, I think the the reality is the science behind this is that we know that patients that are um, on hospice. Uh, typically live longer than those patients that don't receive hospice for similar diagnoses. Um, there are many reasons for why patients on hospice typically live longer. I think that some of the benefits, some of the robust types of uh, services that are offered under hospice care, including symptom management, pain management, uh, spiritual um, support, um, psychosocial support, uh, the emotional side of what people and patients are going through. Those are all supportive um, things that I think many times our focus is pain management and the physical piece of the patient's decline. But there's so many other pieces of um, care that hospices provide that I think um, patients and their families will benefit from earlier referrals. You know, I think it's the, the challenge um, for doctors as well as patients is when is it time? When's the appropriate time to refer? And I think that, you know, it, it can sometimes be challenging and, uh, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, having a referral made to hospice to have a, an initial evaluation done by a hospice nurse or a hospice provider to say, is it, are we at that point uh, with dad or mom? Is this something that we would benefit? Sometimes the educational piece of just the initial evaluation is helpful for families to, to reflect and say, I think this is the right time that we should start this. It doesn't have to be about the scary H word that means to folks, if I push the H word away, maybe I can just ignore the fact that I'm declining. Patients know they're declining. They know that their train is slowing down. And so I think that we as family members really have a responsibility to honor our loved one's wishes. The physician paradox is that our training teaches us to help and to cure and to treat patients and we feel some sense many times of not being smart enough to be able to have another solution to a patient's overall decline when in fact we know in our hearts here's a patient that probably does have a short prognosis and would benefit from receiving hospice care. Um, so I think that late referrals to hospice continue to be a challenge. I think that uh, in some uh, environments they, uh, things have gotten better, but um, it is, I think for me, um, probably um, more likely to get more traction uh, from the lay public. You know, I think that you know, physicians um, have limited time in their office. Uh, the busy uh, hospitalists and physicians in the hospital sometimes are challenged to have, have those conversations which really take not five, not 10, not 15 minutes, but more so series of conversations about um, what a person's prognosis really is and what uh, is likely to benefit them at this point in their life. So I think as consumers, my uh, recommendation always is, you know, you may be the one to start the conversation with the doctor. Uh, it seems like mom is declining. Um, you know, this is her fourth hospitalization in the last three months. And um, I'm wondering every time we are admitted to the hospital or she's admitted to the hospital, she's in for a day or two, she seems better, she goes back home within a couple of weeks, her symptoms are returning and we're challenged again with, do we bring her back to the hospital? Is there another way? Is there something else we should be thinking or considering? I think that's an entry point uh, for me that I, I think consumers can you know, um, allow the physician to feel more comfortable, sort of uh, the carrot has been given to them. All they have to do is seize the carrot and really be honest because I think they know in their hearts what's likely to happen for this patient.
One of the real uh, gems in my day is seeing patients in their home when they've been referred to hospice. Um, the opportunities there are to really discuss with them in the home uh, questions that clearly you know they have. So what does this mean? What is um, likely to happen? Uh, addressing what are their fears? What do they know about what uh, is likely to happen to them? What are they fearful of? Um, also addressing what are their goals? Uh, many times they have very, very distinct goals, not only short-term but long-term goals. I saw a gentleman uh, a little while back. His goal when, we had, when I saw him and admitted him to hospice um, was, seemed minimal but really very big for him. The two goals he had were that he wanted to uh, be alive to uh, witness his next birthday that was coming up in a couple of weeks. And he also wanted to be present physically uh, at the uh, baptism of his newest granddaughter. So for him, his fear was he was not going to um, make those two goals. And um, while I didn't have a crystal ball, I felt fairly sure that given his diagnosis, given his illness burden, given his symptoms, those two goals were achievable for him. I, I will say that one of his biggest uh, impediments that he was fearful of was he was having a lot of pain from his disease, from his cancer. And he was leery of being able to leave his home to go to the church to witness the baptism. To which we talked about there are some options that we can talk about in terms of trying to reduce your pain. His eyes got big. He said, really? And so I think that that was a fear coming in that he was signing up for the scary H word. He felt as though these two goals that were very near and dear to his heart, he may not be able to meet. And uh, at the end of our conversation, uh, he was a guy that I think took a deep breath and uh, felt some reassurance that while he was not going to outlive um, or outrun his diagnosis, he was going to be able to meet some milestones, meet some goals that he really had and he wanted to, to meet.